62% of young ladies between 16 and 24, which is the age more or less that the patient starts to feel endometriosis, didn't know anything about endometriosis. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Kennedy and today at Best Fertility Now we are speaking to Mr McBrick who is an endometriosis surgeon at uh, Cambridge Spires and the NHS. Welcome Mr McBrick, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for helping us for this awareness campaign that we are trying to do for endometriosis. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay. So let's start with the main question that I think every woman with endometriosis would want to know this. Why? Why does it take so long to get diagnosed in the UK? Well, basically, I don't think it's only in the UK. Okay. Delay in diagnosis has been described over the years in many countries. So the, one of the very interesting papers that discussed this was in 2011 mm -hmm. by a team from the UK. And they evaluated the 16 hospitals in 10 countries all over the globe. Yeah. And there is a delay, yeah. not only in the UK. Surprisingly, in the States, yes. it's even longer. Yeah, so, but why, why is it taking so long? What is causing that delay? So in my eyes, and this is my humble opinion, there is a, a problem of awareness about this disease. Mm -hmm. This is the main and most important thing. So for example, patient awareness, so yeah. the concept of uh, menstrual well-being yeah. is not there. Okay. Apart from the fact that there is a taboo mm -hmm. on the menstrual dysfunctions and menstrual problems yeah. in general, in some cultures, but also in open Western cultures, it's still like this. Yeah. And there is also, I, I don't feel that it makes part of uh, education, yeah. The so, concept of menstrual well-being. The woman was educated from an early age exactly. in the science of the power. Exactly. Of What's normal and what's subnormal? Why a lady should suffer that much? Yeah. And the answer is yes, menstruation is painful. It's painful. Yes. If she speaks, this is the answer. 62% of young ladies between 16 and 24, which is the age more or less that the patient mm -hmm. starts to feel endometriosis, didn't know anything about endometriosis. So at the end, if this is not even the patient, she, this could be the partner. Yeah. This could be the employer. Yeah. This could be, this could be. So public awareness, I think it's important because yeah, I don't I really in these 16, 17 years, I have really seen a big, big, big number of patients with endometriosis. Yes. And uh, I'm not surprised when I see a patient after giving her the result of the MRI, saying, Madam, you have endometriosis. And she cries from happiness mm -hmm. because at the end, she found someone who listened, someone who has taken the situation seriously. Yeah. And at the end, she found an answer. Yes. Even if this is a big endometriosis problematic, but at the end, she found the reply. Yes. So public awareness in my eyes is very important. Mm -hmm. We want to work and focus on the short, the shortening the, 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 the um, gap or reducing the delay in the diagnosis. I think the clue is in the GPs. And the diagnosis has to be taken more seriously. This is how I. Believe. In terms of the general public or the medical profession? In terms of uh, prioritizing this as a disease. Socially, politically, financially, medically, and everything. Yeah, exactly. medically, yeah. If I had a diagnosis and then you tend to go away with, okay, you've got this stage, this stage, this, remove this, remove this, remove that, here's some painkillers, and you get sent on your merry way. And it gives you a certain amount of relief. Some, some patients are really fortunate, it doesn't come back. Others, such as myself, I get things three to six months relief, and it's back, if not worse. And were the patients that feel really disheartened, we can't just keep having surgeries and it can really affect your life. It's difficult to take control of, you lose so much work, you can't socialise properly. And this is the group of angry women, they're, they're getting depressed from it, it's ruining sure. their life. 
What is your advice to those women? How do they take control of that situation? I, I think that the, the, the most important thing is uh, that we have to, uh, and that's how I, obviously my role is not to decide for the patients. And this is again the modern approach to endometriosis. So again, years and years ago, I used to see my professor saying, Madame, we have this, we have to remove your uterus. Removing the uterus alone is not a solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. Point. Yeah. Removing the ovaries is not a solution to the problem. Okay. With endometriosis, unfortunately, we don't have a test. So what happens is that you give medical treatment to the patient unless she wants surgery. Yeah. And yes, we know that most of the patients at the end we operate, that's fine. But there is a percentage of patients who respond to medical treatment. Yeah. And we can, I wouldn't say avoid surgery, but at least delay surgery that we don't have this test. So the only solution is a trial and error, unfortunately. Yeah. You are the boss here. Mm -hmm. Barrage to the patient at the beginning. And this is the deal. You are the boss here. Okay. My role. My responsibility is to explain things, and you're the one who decides. Yeah. I'm not giving you the whole responsibility, but I'm just telling you that my role is to give you information mm -hmm. and help you make an informed choice. And if, if you think you're going to a surgery, do your research, ask your consultant the links and what might work for you, what yeah. might not. You've got that, every right to do so. Yes, definitely. Yes. And really understand what you're letting yourself for.